All right, guys, happy Finance Friday. I am back. All right, so before we start the video, uh, I want to remind everybody, if you're looking for any high-end Magic Gathering art, sealed booster boxes, starter decks, whatever, or replica paintings from Jerry Terratelli, you can always find me at VintageMagic.com or email me at Daniel at VintageMagic.com. And if you're looking to sell, I can bring a bunch of cash and uh, purchase it from you. And I'd be happy to meet you, grab dinner, play some magic, relive the memories. All right, guys, enjoy the video. Have a great Friday and a great weekend. Enjoy. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com. Hey guys, welcome back. It's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com, and happy Finance Friday. All right, so this video is all about a subject out of almost 100 videos I have done for Finance Friday. I have yet to talk about marketing. And you know, I was asked this question pretty much, you know, every month or, you know, every other month, whatever. People always ask me, how does Rudy from Alpha Investments make his money? Well, I'm going to talk about a key thing that everybody in this entire world needs to start learning about. Well, you already know what it is. It's marketing. Marketing 101. So, I was... a uh, Backstory, I was eating lunch at this little cafe and I was watching Ryan Reynolds uh, talk with the CEO of uh, T-Mobile and also Jim Cramer from Mad Money. And briefly, I'll just tell you, I was rather surprised because Ryan Reynolds uh, you know, sold this Mint Mobile. Uh, he has a large stake in this company for around $1.33 billion or something of stock and cash. And I was surprised by his answer of why and how he did it. And I guess it just makes common sense though. He basically said in a nutshell that he was the marketing side of it. He obviously uh, believed in the brand and the value proposition, but he didn't create the company, right? He was just, uh, bringing awareness to something really special. And I thought about this eating my sandwich and drinking my tomato soup, and I was like, special? Cell phones? Come on. Verizon, Sprint, we're now T-Mobile, uh, AT&T, special? What's so special about it, right? What is special about cell phones? They're a commodity. They're just like TVs. It's all about price, and I guess some quality here and there, but mostly about price. And I guess I thought about like, what made him so different? Why did it sell to T-Mobile? Well, it's marketing. And that is the reason why I wanna talk about this video about Rudy and Alpha Investments. And also in general, I want people to be aware of how does it work? Why do people buy the way they do? And you know, like it or not, you may not like me, you may not like Rudy, you may not like certain YouTubers or certain stores, but you'll go back or you will go back in certain ways because if, the, if this is a big important part, if the product is good, if the service of the product are good, then the marketing will do its job. Now, marketing does bring awareness. There's you know the, the one-time clickbait or you know girls trying to show off their body to go for you to OnlyFans. I know you guys have been going to OnlyFans. I know you guys are doing it, doing it. I know people are going to click on certain advertisements because they're curious. We all do it. We're all curious about the world of marketing and what's, what products are out there. But this product and service must actually be a good value and also uh, do what it says it's going to do. So the case of Mint Mobile, the price is $15 starting out and it goes a little higher. It goes higher with unlimited service but their value proposition and their price and their service is a good product, which is equates to a good value. So let's talk about Rudy. All right, so his situation is he posts online these videos, right? 
These videos are to shock and awe you in some cases, sometimes tell you the news, sometimes open packs, uh, things that he's selling, pretty much what he's selling on his Patreon. Why do you think he does all that stuff? Why do you think he makes all the crazy noises and, and uh, uh, all, the, you know, all the weird commentary, whatever? It doesn't matter, right? Why? It's all for what reason? For you as a consumer to buy or for you to be aware of him and then get more views. All this is obvious. That's the reason why a lot, that's what makes a successful business like his versus unsuccessful YouTubers, other businesses, unsuccessful. Um, the shock and awe really gets people. Also, if you have a celebrity like Ryan Reynolds, Ryan Reynolds is a super well-known actor, right? Deadpool, funny movies all over the place. Uh, if you have that type of caliber of spokesperson for your brand, yeah, your, your brand's going to catapult to the top and have awareness to be bought out for sure. Now, again, caveat said, if the product and the service don't match up, people might try or be aware of that product, but if it's shit, nah, it's not going to sell T-Mobile for 1.35 billion. So that's important. Like just like anything else, a restaurant, skincare, whatever. You might try it because it's Kylie Jenner's skincare product. But if it's shit product, not gonna survive. Not gonna survive and do well. So with Rudy's situation, think about this. He gets money off Patreon, Google ad revenue, and the products you sell. He doesn't really sell much eBay of his own personal stock. You'll notice that he has his collection and he shows what he has, but he never sells that. So that's something he doesn't sell. Like versus me, I market my brand, my product. So you as a consumer, you people watching the videos uh, are aware that, hey, Daniel from Vintage Magic is a person I can trust and I can do business with. You may click on a link or links of things I sell on my eBay or things you might you know, want to contact me about a question. All this triggers, right? Well, marketing has worked. If you are looking to, you know, I'll just shameless plug. If you're looking to sell or buy or anything, appraisal, consignment, consultation, find me at vintagemagic.com or easier, text me, call me at 206-914-7974 or email me at daniel at vintagemagic.com. I really appreciate it. I'd love to work with you. So I just did marketing. All this is so obvious. It's like the, this has been going on for probably, you know, thousands of years, right? Thousands and thousands of years. Not much else I can say about this topic other than some thoughts I have for you guys to kind of think about for your financial goals and needs. If you're creating a business, marketing is an essential part of your business. And Sales is also related to marketing. Sales, marketing, sales, marketing, they're all kind of related. There's a relationship there. I'm not going to talk about sales straight up, but I will talk about marketing and sales in this part of the video. If you uh, think about this, the marketing triggers uh, an emotion, uh, kind of like what Ryan Reynolds was saying, a storytelling. And then that emotion gets you fired up to basically look at it. So Ryan Reynolds basically promotes the Mint Mobile, talks about, you know, hey, we don't spend a lot of money on ads or, you know, certain things. We don't have locations because we want or have, you know, we don't have crazy, you know, fluff stuff. We want to focus on the customer. And that right there triggers like, man, you know, I know Ryan Reynolds. What's this Mint Mobile thing? I know T-Mobile. I know Verizon. I know, uh, you know, AT&T. But what is Mint Mobile? Ryan Reynolds brought you there, Right. Now, if you are, uh, if they have like a special or some, some other things to get you, you know, hooked on, I think a new customer, uh, it's like $30 versus $40 for unlimited, uh, you know, wireless or something, and, and internet, that's a, a way to promote additionally and get more business. So think about this for yourself in your life. Let's say you're an LGS store. Let's say you're a small business. Let's say you're a startup wine company. A startup uh, LGS, startup, startup anything. I don't care. Startup gamer, startup Twitch streamer, startup, I don't know, poker player. 
you have to market yourself. And it's not just posting on Instagram or YouTube, all that stuff. You have to have a personality and a strategy that will hook the people, the hook line. And that's the part of the video I will want to make sure you understand is that Rudy got well known and famous because of his hooks, the way he has attracted consumers and the audience to watch him. That is what made it special. It's not, I mean, he's talking about the same shit we already know from other YouTubers. And Wizards of the Coast posts that news anyway. You can read it yourself, right? But it's the comedy. It's the uh, acting. It's the uh, the news, and, or sorry, the, the throwing a shit. You know, throwing stuff around and just making crazy noises and saying, folks, 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 folks. I mean, those videos get more views and more shock and awe. Think about it this way also. I'm talking about products and services. Think about this very carefully. The videos that are flesh and blood, Weiss, Final Fantasy, those videos. Look at his views. Look at his views. Why are those videos not as popular? Back to what I said. The product and the service is not equatable to a successful, something that people don't really give a shit about, honestly. So remember, that's really important. Uh, I also think that a lot of people get upset about people like us, people that are online, people are, you know, get jealous, they post on Reddit, they're like, oh, eh, eh, I, they, don't, don't believe everything you see online, first off. What you see online is definitely fake news unless you actually have actual evidence of something. But you'll get mad about that stuff. You'll see it. You'll get frustrated. The thing is, though, all of that is still marketing. All is marketing. Good news, bad news, all news is marketing. It makes you remember, oh, that person, oh, that person did that, oh. And the thing is, the, the internet, you know, you'll have like this, like, I don't know, attention span of a gnat. You'll probably be like, oh, 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 Rudy did that? Oh, 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 that's fine. I don't care. I'm just gonna, I'm still gonna buy from him. I gotta watch him again. I'm never gonna watch Rudy again. Oh, I'm gonna watch him again because I have to. Because, uh, you know, YouTube suggestions told me to watch him. That's the problem. We've all done it, been there, done that. Now, unless you've had a product or a service, you've had a bad experience, you exit from your entire brain cells, your long-term brain cells, and you eliminate that from your mind, then I can see how, yeah, you're never gonna watch it or buy a product again or go to that place. I hate Disneyland. I had a terrible experience. Oh, do you like waiting in lines? Do you love waiting in lines? Do you just love it? Do you like buying $10 churros? Do you love that shit? Yeah. And I always say, I'm never going to go back to Disney World or Disneyland again. But what happens? I'm right back at it. Why? Because, well, kind of have kids and, you know, we all, I mean, you and my kids are like, I don't want to wait in line anymore. I don't want to do this. But we still are suckers and we still go back for it because we see a commercial. We see a moment of pictures. We remember the little times we smiled that, that you know after waiting two hours and chafing of your skin your crotch right all that stuff in disney world yeah you're sweating you love that shit because it you know the memories the memories it brought an emotion that's what it does to you it does so to end the finance friday i'm gonna do a shameless promotion for my friend anthony from slow your roll gaming in hilo hawaii i went to his shop saw the changes of his shop he remodeled. Check it out. Link is below of his shop. The video is hilariously awesome. Well, it's just for fun. Have a great weekend, guys. All right, guys. We are with uh, Antonio Banderas when he was younger. You know you that, go. guys? <laughs> just kidding, guys. It's Anthony from Slow Your Roll. Remember those videos we did? Look it up on my channel. But just hang out with Anthony. Look at some cards. And I want to show you guys his new shop and design real quick. Uh, his website will be below in the link. And why don't you show, show us real quick uh, yeah. what's going on? Yeah, you want to take a look around? Let's do it, let's do it real quick. Let's do it, let's uh, go ahead. We got here the new retail section that we've been uh, working on. So the last time you guys saw, this was just the room here. And we had like this hallway that we kind of walked through. But we tore the walls down. We put new lighting in. We put new flooring in. And uh, we got all sorts of stuff now for sale. And uh, let me show you guys the main yeah. room now. So yeah, this got, has changed a lot. Yeah, so we got a Pokemon League going on right now. So let me show you guys. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
So right Pokemon now, is hot, huh? Pokemon's very hot. Pokemon's extremely hot. All the time. Hotter than Magic? Uh, I'd say about as hot, maybe a little hotter. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's still very hot. Cool. So we got more Pokemon stuff on the wall here. And Magic the Gathering. And um, so we do... Um, on Sundays, we do a Pokemon League. And these guys, they're all kind of trading and getting ready for next week. Next week, there's uh, the Scarlet and Violet pre-release. Oh, wow. So that's going to be something that... Uh, a lot of these guys are going to be looking forward to. So yeah, and the fun. shop used to be right here, the cards. Yeah, so Show us that area. Yeah, so we're still working on this area. This is our newest area. But, See, guys? People um, say there's a recession, but not, not here, though. They're yeah. expanding. So this is our newest room. Uh, we, got this, we, we got this section uh, around the middle of last year. Uh, and we're still kind of working on it. We're going to have eventually a pack wall here. So we'll have a bunch of packs from different games up there. And we're going to eventually kind of wall this off. So right now you can kind of see the back office and like the online sales. Right. So we're going to put something to separate that from the front uh, the front register area. Right. And uh, yeah, we still have all sorts of stuff. But um, you can kind of see, look at, our, look at our case for Pokemon. Notice how empty it is. Oh, yeah. Yeah, what's going on with that? Well. And the magic is full. It's full. <laughs> so the problem right now is we literally can't get it fast enough. Oh wow! It comes in and it sells. So um, we are always out of stock of Pokemon. And what season. and what do you account for that? What do I count for that? Like 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 what, what do you think is happening? I think um, there's just a lot of demand for Pokemon. While Magic, there's there's consistent demand, but I think it's still nothing like how Pokemon has just been on fire for what two and a half, three years now. It's just right. it's been crazy. It's been so crazy. Um, and it's still crazy. Awesome. All right, guys. Well, link will be below of uh, Anthony's awesome shop. One day he's going to own the entire building. I'm telling you. It's going to expand all the way over there at one point. All right, guys. Maybe. Thanks, Anthony, for having me over. All right. Thanks. Thanks, man. Hey, everyone. It's me, Daniel, with VintageMagic.com. I want to share with you more about how we handle consignments. So to begin the consignment process, we actually need to start with the consultation service. In this consultation, I will determine what you're looking to do. And generally consigners usually tell me, hey Dan, I'm looking to sell my items and maximize the value of their collection. After we determine through the consultation, I usually like to do an appraisal process. And an appraisal process in terms of a consignment is more fitted towards authenticity and valuation for current market values. From there, after a contract is crafted and signed, we will then receive the items from you. The reason why our consignment process is very thorough is we also identify cards that could be graded so then they can maximize higher dollar values. So the payment process is very simple. Once we have sold your items, you'll get an updated ledger and we will process payment um, for whatever form of payment you need. As a consigner, you're gonna experience our white glove service. What that means is I'm gonna personally handle your collectibles from beginning to end. And rest assured, the client that purchases your collectibles will also receive the same white glove service. It's a signature service that I really pride myself on in working closely with my clients. Vintage Magic. Game. Collect. Invest. For more information about our consulting and professional services, visit VintageMagic.com.